The military invasion of Ukraine last year signaled a troubling surge in aggression from Russia. Relations with the West are now so tense that former Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev is warning the world is on the brink of a new Cold War. In 2014, Russia was involved in more provocations of war than any year since the Iron Curtain fell. Tonight, a closer look at the conflict in Ukraine and the threat of a wider military confrontation. Here's Claude Adams. This is Turkish Air Force speaking, Gongard. Russia had violated Turkey's airspace many times before November 24th, with no consequences. This time was different. You are approaching Turkish airspace. Change your heading south immediately. The pilot of a Russian jet either ignored multiple warnings or didn't hear them. So Turkey blasted it out of the sky. I think the tragedy with Russian pilot is a result of, of the arrogance uh, based on impunity. Putin's Russia is, 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 is a full-blown one-man dictatorship. Former chess grandmaster Garry Kasparov is one of Vladimir Putin's strongest critics. He says the Russian president is to blame for the incident with Turkey, the latest in an alarming pattern of aggression. Putin violated international law, invaded neighboring countries, uh, sent troops to Syria, and he is the most dangerous troublemaker in the world. It's the first time a NATO ally has shot down a Russian aircraft since the Cold War. But it shouldn't come as a shock. Nearly 25 years after the fall of the Soviet Union, Cold War-style saber-rattling is taking off again. I can confirm that we have seen a substantial uh, build-up of Russian forces. March 1, 2014. Putin's military invades Ukraine and annexes the Crimean Peninsula. From there, fighting between separatists backed by Moscow and Ukrainian government forces spreads further into Ukraine. It was not the government of Kiev that destabilized eastern Ukraine. It's been the pro-Russian separatists who are encouraged by Russia and armed by Russia. September 2014. While NATO leaders meet in Wales, a Russian strategic bomber practices cruise missile strikes off the east coast of North America within range of New York, Washington, D.C., and Ottawa. Attacking one ally, you will be facing the whole alliance. March 5, 2015, a NATO flotilla, including Canadian frigate HMCS Fredericton, is closely followed by a pair of Russian warships in the Black Sea. These are not isolated incidents. A European security research group documented 67 close military encounters between Russia and the West from January 2014 to March 2015. Those are numbers not seen since the Cold War, spawning a dangerous global chess match that could spiral out of control. We have to make sure that we, we play chess, not poker. Chess is a 100% transparent game. You know exactly your resources and the resources of the opposition. Kasparov grew up behind the Iron Curtain. While he was winning chess championships for the Soviet Union, Putin was a spy for the KGB. Poker is a game um, uh, of, of psychology. You can win with a very weak hand if you know how to bluff. And he's a KGB guy, he knows how to bluff. Things have not been this tense and hostile since 1989 or since the 1980s. And there are similarities in that Putin is really defining himself and therefore his country against the West. After more than 40 years of Cold War tension, tear down this wall. The fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989 and the dissolution of the Soviet Union two years later brought democratic reform and optimism for the future. 
that was before Putin rose to power as Russia's president in 1999. In 1991, I believed it was, you know, it was over. We thought it was that, that's done. But it was a very short moment. I could hear Putin's words uh, at the KGB headquarters when he said, uh, once KGB, always KGB. And uh, he repeatedly said that the collapse of the Soviet Union was the greatest geopolitical disaster of the 20th century. As Putin adopted an increasingly authoritarian governing style, Kasparov quit chess in 2005 became a political activist. We are aiming to dismantle Putin's regime. Putin never participated in, in a single debate in his life. The only debates in Russia is between protesters and riot police. Kasparov became very familiar with those riot police. He was arrested at political rallies twice in 2007. He ended his bid to be president under pressure from the government. And the elections in Putin Russia is something that is fixed, so uh, you, you know the results in advance. So uh, I always said that in Russia we, we, we tried not to win elections, but to have elections. Then, starting with the 2008 invasion of Georgia, Putin repeatedly violated international law with little resistance. His annexation of Crimea exploded into war in eastern Ukraine where a fragile ceasefire has given way to renewed fighting. What I think he wants, what he likes, is destabilized states close to him that he can draw into his orbit and make part of a new sort of Russian empire. Even in Syria, the Kremlin's motives are viewed with suspicion. Putin claims Russia is there to bomb the so-called Islamic State. Critics say his real goal is to cause even more turmoil in the region. Those who expect Putin could be an ally in the fight against terror, they're wrong because Putin has no interest of stabilizing the Middle East. He, he will provoke conflicts and wars anywhere he can. After years of sitting by while Putin attacked neighboring countries, the West finally appears ready to respond. But well, I absolutely believe it's a credible threat. I mean, Russia has told Denmark, Romania, Sweden that they are nuclear targets if they participate in any sort of a ballistic missile defense. This is Trident Juncture, NATO's largest military exercise in more than a decade. More than 36,000 troops gathered in Italy, Spain, and Portugal in November massive show of strength was planned before Putin's forces invaded Ukraine in early 2014. But NATO commanders are clearly concerned. Nobody here wants a conflict with Russia, uh, but in order to make sure that doesn't happen, there has to be a, we have to demonstrate a deterrent capabilities. Kasparov fled his homeland in 2013. He now lives in New York. He says it should be clear to everyone by now that Putin's only goal is to stay in power. He doesn't care about the consequences. He doesn't think about Russia's strategic interests. For him, Russia is Putin. Putin is Russia. That was, that's the final stage of agony of a dictatorship, but it's the most dangerous one because this guy controls nukes. Coming up, where Putin may strike next. If Putin moves on the Baltic states militarily, we will be at war. We can ignore these warnings, which means this geopolitical winter could be, could be very long and it could be very costly. After a year of violent struggles in eastern Ukraine, villages like Piski now lay empty and in ruins. A negotiated ceasefire here recently collapsed, and hostilities between pro-Russian separatists and the Ukrainian army have resumed. On the front lines of the conflict, Ukrainian soldiers are poorly equipped for war.
Despite Russia's illegal invasion of Crimea, the West hasn't sent troops or weapons to help the Ukrainians fight back. Значно, потому что если сегодня мы воюем здесь, не факт, что дальше пойдет эта война куда-то в другие страны. Так что, ну, я думаю, надо всем с этим бороться. The war has already displaced more than two million people and claimed an estimated 8,000 lives, civilians and soldiers. In the peaceful village of Volodymyr Volinsky, more than a thousand kilometers to the west of the fighting, we visited the widow of one of the soldiers killed. <laughs> Nadia Uparova and her husband Igor had one daughter and another on the way when he left for eastern Ukraine. But Igor would never meet his second child. He was two months shy of his 30th birthday when he was killed in action. Я знала, його вбили 28 Ігор served as a peacekeeper in Kosovo in 2008 when he was only 24. He loved children, animals and photography. He documented everything in photos literally until the day he died. Він сфотографував це його остання фотографія в день його смерті. Важко з ним. Дуже не вистачає взагалі чоловіка, як ласки, якихось гарних слів, когось тепла. Такої взяли, вирвали з душі, перезітити і всі. І уставили таку ту пустоту. Стільки погубив, найкраще в мене забрав. Затія війну, дітей забрав найдорожче, це тата, що я так не пограюся, як він. Він взагалі, він як грається з дітьми. Надя blames Vladimir Putin for taking her husband, and like the soldiers on the front lines, fears there will be more death if the West doesn't step in to help. Не знаю, це, це хочеться саме, щоб Україну не уставили сам на сам з Росією, щоб її підтримували, щоб їй допомагали, щоб їй допомагали. Бо вона маленька, Росія велика, громадна країна. Even after the devastation in Ukraine, many analysts are skeptical that Putin will risk attacking a NATO ally. But chess grandmaster turned political activist Garry Kasparov doesn't believe Putin will stop until the West shows it's willing to go to war. He uh, got away with Crimea, uh, with Eastern Ukraine, with, with other acts of, of, of violating international order. Now he's in Syria. and. When people say, oh, no, 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 it's, that's, that's, you will not do this, you will not do that, my response is, wait a second, the list of what Putin will not do, it was so long, and he kept doing that. We have to realize that every war you know, requires sacrifices. He says attempts by the West to engage Putin and create friendly political and economic ties have failed miserably. Engagement today is, is, is a way to cover an appeasement. We have been saying for many years that Putin was originally a Russian problem. Then we said it would be a, pro uh, would be a problem for former Soviet uh, republics. And he was. And eventually it will be a problem for everybody. This year, NATO tripled its response force to 40,000 troops including a contingent of 5,000 soldiers who can be deployed to Eastern Europe within 48 hours. It's the biggest new troop commitment since the Cold War. Those soldiers can be commanded from new headquarters in six countries right on Russia's doorstep. 
including Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, where it's feared the next Russian invasion could happen. Putin may one day cross NATO borders in Estonia and Latvia. I wouldn't exclude anything, and we'd better be ready now. If Putin moves on the Baltic states militarily, we will be at war. If that happens, it will be NATO's biggest test in more than a quarter century. A titanic clash is shaping up between longtime foes and what could be the dawning of a whole new Cold War. So we can uh, uh, be complacent, we can, uh, uh, we can um, uh, ignore these warnings, which means this winter, this geopolitical winter, could be, could be very long and it could be very costly. And that is our broadcast for tonight. A reminder, you can always connect with us on Facebook and Twitter or at globalnews.ca slash 16 by 9. I'm Carolyn Jarvis. From all of us here at 16 by 9, thanks for watching.